Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg on this very special edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Mayhemies. We're going to be talking about professional wrestling. We're talking about the best of 2015. This is the Mayhemies 2016. I am your very spiffy. You see, I'm wearing the hat. I'm wearing the tie. We're all good to go here. I'm wearing the suit jacket. And uh, we are super fancified. Uh, so we're trying to hear for the Mayhemies. And also with me uh, from uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, also, he's combed his hair. He's buttoned at least three of his buttons. He's ready to go. He is the voice of Inspire. I said at least. Inspire Pro Wrestling. The voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Eamon Payton is joining us. How are you doing today, sir? Hi. hi. I, my shirt is fully buttoned because it is a fancy night. Don't let... It's what Sorg said deter you from the fact that I care enough to button more than three buttons because yes. I am ready for the Mayhemies. Exactly, exactly. And also with us um, from the Award Central Domicile, it is your Papa Lunchbox here in the Pittsburgh area as well. DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter, panelriot.com. How you doing, sir? Great, great. Excited to talk about the best 2015 professional wrestling. I have a question, though. What does the award domicile mean? I don't know. I'm just making up words at this point. You know I have no plan for this, right? <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Mayhem Show. Um, also with us, we got a pairing. We got them squeezed onto the camera. And uh, look, look how fancy they are. They really, like, did you? Wow. Uh, is that how you dress for work, Matt? Uh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the boat. This is how I dress all the time. All the time, all the time. All the time. Matt and Jen Carlin's at Main Street. Matt at Jen Carlin's on the Twitters as well. And uh, and and Matt, even though we're talking about the best of the best, you called your best wrestler already in Sasha Banks uh, over on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That's right, Sorg. Thanks for the plug. Go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com right now and find out why Sasha Banks is my wrestler of the year. But the good news is that we have both male and female categories for tonight. For the wrestlers, wrestlers of the of the year. So no hurt feelings tonight as far as that goes. That's right. That's right. And also, uh, everybody, you can go over to WrestlingMamShow.com. Subscribe on the iTunes, Twitter, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreakers, iHeartRadios. I think I repeated something in there. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And check out all the other plenty of shows that we're doing. Um, Midweek Wars, Raw Wrap-Ups, Total Divas. Uh, indie mayhem shows, interviews, talks, uh, uh, watching old wrestling, so much, so much going on. And, of course, the great columns by Matt Collins himself, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Or you can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or Good Times. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, uh, and and please uh, join us and uh, drop some fan mail, all kinds of stuff. And also please uh, join us live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Round about 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, over there. And uh, you can also please, uh, if, if you would, support the show. If you're digging the show, if you, you're getting some value, some entertainment out at it uh, 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 to this. So we don't have to chase down a weird, weird uh, uh, ticket. Uh, did you get a ticket of uh, 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 sponsors like some of the other wrestling podcasts out there? Um, and, 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 and we thank so much to the people uh, uh, helping out, us out with that. Of course, one of our earliest ones, uh, Mr. Tony Garza, he's, ca- he's cashed in his Patreon in the bank as well uh, from the WrestlingRevolution.com as well as the Diggity! Woo! Woo! Uh, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's, uh, oh, damn, I forgot all of it and I can't pull the site up. <laughs> uh, wow. Matthew and Jennifer um, Carlin's, uh, uh, foundation for podcast betterment and Mr. Ed it. Burke himself. Woo. Oof. That's a mouthful. You got all the words. Um, thank you so much for you guys for joining us. And I can't spell our own Patreon page to confirm any of that stuff and supporting the show. Um, and, and then our sponsors that give us pizza, and we'll talk about them later in the show as well. Um, so let's get into, uh, like I said, it is 
It is the uh, the Mayhemies, and we're ready to get into the awards. Um, wait, wait, wait. We got the... Oh, no, it's not working. There it is. And hey, welcome yeah. to the Mayhemies, everybody. Uh, the the most luxurious of evenings that we have. I mean, look, Bobby F. J-Town there in the front row wearing the, the, the silk pajamas. Uh, everybody's all set. Everybody's in the chat room. Very excited. Now we had a lot. Of, we had a a, a, a a special edition when we uh, uh, presented all the nominees this year. Of course, our good friends uh, Chris Larusso, uh, pro wrestler of, of ten years, as well as uh, IWC promoter uh, Justin Justin Plummer and uh, Mister uh, uh, Joe Dombrowski, of course, of of the Montreal Theory and. Don't forget Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table. Um, all laid out the nominees for us. Your host, DJ Lunchbox, was there. Papa Lunchbox, you were part of the proceedings. Let's talk about this first before we get into it. Uh, were you feeling... Were you? Did, was it in the air that evening as as you uh, hosted those proceedings and, and, and got all the nominations out of those guys? Uh, it was something absolutely special. It was a, it was a really really special night uh, to get to sit down with these uh, these uh, uh, legends of professional wrestling, uh, gentlemen who know their craft and know it well, and uh, to get their pick to get, to get to pick their brains uh, for something as uh, as prestigious and important as the Mayhemies. Uh, it was uh, it was a pleasure, and I really think that uh, they made some excellent, excellent potential selections uh, for our show this evening. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, let's get into the first of the categories. I'm just going to keep queuing this music up. There we go, until YouTube takes us down. Uh, but, uh, of course, best male... There we go. Oh, yeah. Best male performer of the year, as selected by our friends. Uh, first of all, John Cena... Jay Lethal of the Ring of Honor and Seth Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> the votes have been cast. The votes have been cast. And our winner, our winner is wherever I put the winners, is over here. There it is. Have trouble with this. Trouble with <laughs> this. this trouble with this envelope, guys. Drum roll. Drum roll. Seth Rollins won. Seth Rollins. Of course, I know well a lot deserved. of what well deserved. the discussion, of course, <laughs> I know what the guys was like, hey, who who really kind of stepped up and was consistently great, uh, you know, for the year. And I, I think I think, you know, I think it's inarguable that Seth Rollins is definitely the guy. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> Panel. I was going to see. That, <laughs> that was an open uh, question for the floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I agree. I think uh, for the most part in 2015, a, uh, a guy that really did rise up and, and uh, you know, kind of carry the company on his back for a period of time, um, you know, when, especially when he uh, unfortunately suffered an injury at the end of the year, I feel his departure left a big hole in, in, what WWE was, you know, what they had right, right at that point, and um, I, I think that's a real testament to his, you know, the power that he held, I guess, in the sense uh, in 2015. So, yeah, mm. fully agree. Some arguments from the chat room that how Seth Rollins didn't even finish the year, um, and, and well, I guess you could say neither well, did, near did John Cena, but I think collectively, how was his 2015? Pretty, pretty fantastic, I would he, say. He made the impact, right? Matt, what are your what are your impressions of the Seth Rollins? I know Jen is just uh, it's the wrong Shield member, right? Oh, I still I still I, I like Seth. What's not to like? Seth Rollins is amazing. He's super athletic. He took his game to a whole new level. He got the ball. He ran with it. His interviews and his promos got amazing as the year went on, and he kept having amazing matches. He was definitely one of the top three or four guys. In WWE this year, don't you think? Uh -huh. You can argue maybe top two behind Cena. Uh, I thought Cena had a really great year, Sorg. Um, but you can't argue with uh, Seth Rollins. He was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. 
that is amazing. Um, and, and it was it was uh, to be to be fair, and, and, I'll, and I'll point out, you know, it was it was a pretty dead heat. There's a lot of people had a lot of things to say. Uh, I'm going through the the list of names because we did have write-ins as well. Uh, so that really kind of uh, uh, threw the field out of uh, 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 some write-ins, including uh, one for AJ Styles, uh, one for Prince Puma, uh, one for uh, Okada, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's fair as well. Uh, but again, not the popular. Uh, Nakamura was on here as well. And uh, in Corey Futuristic. Mm-hmm. wonder who wrote that one in. I don't, I don't know. That's, that, that is odd. That is odd. Uh, so I, I don't know. There's some other write-ins that are, that are very interesting as, as we'll go through the night here. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but no, certainly we'll, we'll, we'll definitely. Wow, there's some really interesting write-ins actually. Uh, so, uh, so, so I think now is a good time for you to thank this huge response that we got. All these votes that were cast in the Mayhemis this year it was a big success. Oh, absolutely. Response, right? Absolutely. Huge response. Probably the biggest of any of the Mayhemis that we've had here uh, in our 10-year history of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for everybody who participated and shared out uh, uh, this as well. Uh, DJ Lunchbox, he is... Yes, uh, uh, you You have the next uh, nominees and, and winner, right? I, 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 you're 50% correct, Sorg. <laughs> <laughs> I have the next winner. Okay. You want you want to say the nominees? I'll do it for you. No problem, sir. Uh, hold or on. You can tell me where those nominees live, and I can look them up. <laughs> oh, I think we definitely did not share you in the proper Slack for that, but that's going to be uh, fixed in in a moment. There, right there in the. Do you see that pop up there, buddy? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, so, da, da. <laughs> I don't see I don't see any of the write ins. I hope that's, that's not fine. an issue. That's fine. I'll yeah, fill you in fine. later. All right. So uh, the next category is the female wrestler of the year. Uh, they're just like male wrestlers, except for they're female. Uh, it <laughs> <laughs> completely inaccurate and means nothing. Nominated. <laughs> nominated uh, uh, was uh, Sasha Banks, Paige, and Charlotte, three excellent competitors when it when it comes to, to female wrestlers. Um, I, I couldn't help but feel that the the gentlemen were playing it safe uh, and not uh, not picking anything out of the ordinary there. But uh, but hey, uh, when it came down to it, the fans I feel made the right decision. And the female wrestler of the year is. Sasha Banks. Correct answer. That's awesome. That's Correct awesome. And, yeah. I mean, Matt, you're already calling it for 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 your wrestler of the la- of the last year. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel of that being justified in the ranks for the Mayhemis? Well, let me um, let me try to crystallize what my argument was for Sasha Banks as the wrestler of the year. You look at where women's wrestling was at the beginning of 2015. In WWE, and you look at where it was at the end of 2015. The beginning of, 20, at the beginning of 2015, it was a, you know held in pretty decent regard. By the end of 2015, Sasha Banks and Bailey were main eventing specials on the WWE Network. They were blowing the roof off of the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, basically being the co-main event and being playing a huge part in drawing a massive crowd. NXT expanded from the confines of the state of Florida and turned into this burgeoning third brand for WWE to tour around with, and the women were a huge part of that. Sasha Banks raised the bar to heights never before seen in women's wrestling in WWE, and that's why she is my wrestler of the year overall, and that's why she is more than deserving of being the female wrestler of the year. Certainly. I think easily top three is talk- as far as you're talking about mainstream WWE, of course, and, and and while there is tremendous, tremendous, tremendous wrestling, as Eamon and, and Matt, I know you can attest, uh, while following the indies out there, uh, you know, I, I, you know that these guys revolutionized at the top of the game um, and were able to make the impact that they did. I think really, really sticks out, and, and Sasha definitely is the runaway uh, uh, person as far as that goes. So uh, I agree. Uh, her level of uh, consistency when it came to delivering high quality matches this year was uh, amazing, just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, um, and, and yeah, I think she has the potential of being a real big star. She's got the following going forward into 2016. Everybody wants to see her succeed. So 
I'm very excited about what uh, the future holds for her. Fantastic. Fantastic. Looking at the uh, the voting process, uh, we did have Sasha was very much the runaway win, uh, uh, winner here. Um, probably uh, looks like garnering at least a third of the votes, actually. Mm. Uh, so wow. very, very, very strong. Um, some of the interesting write-ins for this one, of course, so uh, we will always have a few of them. Uh, we had Lufisto. L- Lufisto was was listed in here. Um, mm. Nice. And uh, Taya Valkyrie, I'm not. I'm not familiar with that one. I don't. I don't know if Eamon, you might be uh, soon. Soon to debut on Lucha Underground. Soon to debut uh, on Lucha. Oh, primarily amazing. in uh, AAA, I believe. Yes. Okay. Okay. And of course, uh, let's see. Going through these, there's one more. I think I saw. Oh yes, Corey Futuristic. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Well, All right. I mean, you know, he's a versatile competitor, sort of. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, so maybe you join Shine at some point as well. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, all right. So let's move on for our next nominees and uh, uh, next line. Uh, Eamon, I believe you're on this. Uh, do, do, you have, do you have those pulled up? Are you ready to roll, sir? I, I am, sir. I, um, I have the distinct honor and pleasure to present the award for uh, Tag Team of the Year. And if you know anything about the Wrestling Mayhem show. We love some tag teaming. Am I right? (laughs) 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 I don't get it. And the nominees are... (laughs) Um, (laughs) The nominees are the, uh, the, the, the brotherly duo of Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks... Uh, the uh, duo of Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, Red Dragon. Oh. And those weird sheep herding sons of, you know what, the Wyatt family. Oh. Biatches. He was saying biatches. Yeah. He's the first on the show, Eamon. Come on now. It's, it's fancy. It's classy. Those are our three nominees. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner is... The Young Bucks. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! And that's their new theme song right there. Um, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. The Young Bucks really uh, really made a splash like all over the place. And uh, regardless of being, I, I, you know, I, I think the tag team division has been really on top of things this year. I'm really surprised that our, our nominators did not put the New Day in there, although they did discuss Shocking. the New Day. It is shocking, and, but even more shocking, I don't think anybody... Oh, wait, we did have three, four write-ins for the New Day, actually, that I forgot <laughs> that they weren't on the ballot. I was expecting an aggressive writing campaign for the for the New Day, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that the Young Bucks still won. Not that I don't think the New Day is great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I gotta be honest, it was close. It was very close for a writing mm-hmm. campaign uh, by, by a few votes. But well, uh, well, much like much like the New Day, uh, as you know, the Young Bucks and, and them share a thing in common, and the fact that they will fight your children. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, and calling them out even on Raw this week. Um, interesting writings. Uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, I think, is a very admirable mm-hmm. write in here. Uh, also, we got a write in of Corey Futuristic and Old Corey Futuristic. <laughs> I get it. It's kind of like a run. Okay. I, okay. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad somebody's rolling with the gimmick. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Sorry. Um, all right. Uh, fantastic. So we're up through the tag teams. Um, uh, Matt Carlin's, I believe you have our next set of nominees. Thank you, Sorg. You know, Jen, it wouldn't be wrestling without shows. You have to have shows to have wrestling. That's why they call it show business. You need the show in the business of wrestling. Am I right? Isn't it sports entertainment? That's right. And now, here are the nominees for (laughs) show of the year. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Ooh. Wrestle Kingdom 9 and Wrestlemania 31. Drum roll, please. Honey, I will let you do the honors. 
And the winner is NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Yes! Fantastic. I mean, that was, um, wow, I think I think I, I agree. You know, Wrestle Kingdom was definitely a milestone and definitely had a lot of votes going for it in this poll. Uh, uh, really, again, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn eked it out. Just eked it out in this. So it was a dead heat. I think both um, had a super, super huge impact on the industry in their own right. Uh, I can't say enough about the, the, that Brooklyn show, just for what it represented to the NXT brand, packing in, what, 13,000 people into the Barclays Center. More? More than 13,000 people into the Barclays Center. Right. Um, but props to Wrestle Kingdom 9, a, a show that changed the dynamic uh, when it comes to North American wrestling fans and um, New Japan Pro Wrestling in making that giant leap onto American pay-per-view and then branching that into New Japan World. That drew in a lot of fans. So it was a big success, and it was a huge show for Japanese wrestling here in the States. Caught a lot of our attention. Eamon, I know, I, I know. what do you think about the distinction here between uh, TakeOver and Wrestle Kingdom? Uh, I, I I gotta say, while I, I you know do love me some New Japan Pro Wrestling, I, I I hold a special place in my heart for this NXT Takeover Brooklyn show. Um, I find that, like Matt said, it was very important for the NXT brand. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, important for the industry, showcase that a company that didn't necessarily have the names or the um, the sort of you know the the top level star power, so to speak, can still succeed, and um, you know as long as you have a rabid fan base and a, a, a fan base that's willing to support you. Uh, and that's what NXT has and, and it showed in Brooklyn. So uh, that plus the fact that the card was spectacular, Absolutely. Uh, particularly uh, with um, what I would consider a, a, a match of the year century, whatever candidate with uh, Sasha Banks versus Bailey. Um, Right, right. Uh, LB, big year, um, you know, exposing a lot of us to new wrestling. What do you think about the, our top contenders here? I, I genuinely think that uh, that uh, the the main event of that pay per view was <laughs> words. Um, that match alone would have made it a, a show of the year contender. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that it had such a strong undercard. Um, which just gravy icing on the cake. It was uh, it was spectacular. You just don't see that on, was, on the main roster. Yeah, and it's it's. I feel like it's worth mentioning that this um, this would have been my uh, choice for show of the year, um, whether someone else had nominated it or not. And I've been watching wrestling with a, a much more critical eye in 2015, and uh, I was absolutely 100 percent won over. By this uh, by this show, it was spectacular, top to bottom, T to B. Amazing. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, shout outs to uh, some of the other write-ins that we had. Those are always interesting. Uh, in one, almost one earlier. So, so you have that. Uh, so we had uh, one write-in for WrestleFest 2015. Not familiar with that one. And thank you so much for the one that wrote in Wrestling Mayhem Show for Show of the Year. Um, I, I, we, we appreciate that. We certainly appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, despite uh, despite not really being the category we, we, we really kind of were were rolling for, uh, but thank you thank you so much. We really really do appreciate it. Uh, so next up uh, is uh, oh me me with uh, we got the match of the year. A really really interesting uh, takes of this because I mean I, I think there's a lot of ways you could go. So let's see how it went. Oh yeah. Spiffy. This is, this is such an interesting medley we picked here this year. Um, so, match of the year, of course, John Cena versus Kevin Owens at Elimination Chamber 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, and in parentheses, of course, versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 31. And also, Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens Survivor Series 2015. <laughs> that's more of a visual <laughs> cue for you guys on audio um there you go there you go so i'm sorry oh, it's audio huh? <laughs> shut up <laughs> and the winner 
Okay. It's Indiana Jones. Oh my God. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of stuff in this medley, apparently. You're going to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Our winner is John Cena and Kevin Owens at Elimination Chamber 2015. <laughs> what the hell? We oh, got God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Playing you off already. <laughs> We're done. We're done. You're not seeing this on YouTube, apparently. Um... <laughs> But anyways, no, I, I think uh, of the pay-per-view that wasn't supposed to be in a, in a pay-per-view, Eamon, what do you think this match happened in your hometown? I would have loved to see this match live. <laughs> um, but I did it because I was working on another wrestling event. Um, no, this was a absolutely match of the year. Uh, well, I would not I mean to sound so good, but uh, no, this was fantastic. I uh, did an amazing job of uh, skyrocketing Kevin Owens, you know, up into that, you know, uh, contender sort of status of, of being somebody that could be considered a threat, uh, especially so early in his WWE career. This is this match happened maybe six months, I think, into his you know time in WWE, and that's including NXT. Um, both made them look amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was fantastic. Amazing, amazing. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, the Carlins duo of this one? What, what, what were we not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. You know what, Sorg? You know what? Fire up the griddle because I got a hot take for you. Okay. This is a miscarriage of justice. What? You know, Cena Owens was a nice match. You know, it had a nice result. It didn't have any lasting impact. For my money, give me Reigns, Lesnar, and in parentheses, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania for lasting impact. For a spectacular, visceral, beat the clock. Oh my God, it's going to be 11 o'clock any minute and our pay-per-view window is going to close and finish to the pay-per-view. That was probably the most amazing end to any event the entire year as far as execution, as far as just that, that thrilling moment. So out of those three, I would most certainly pick that one as the match of the year. Fantastic, fantastic. LB, what do you think? Come on now. You can't you can't honestly expect to come up against John Cena in any manner of competition and win. I mean, obviously, this mat this 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 was obvious from the very beginning. As soon as the words John Cena crossed people's lips, it was over. Uh, it was a spectacular match. And while I do appreciate uh, the um, the surprise of Brock Lesnar. And uh, and Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and that whole you know bit of business there. Uh, John Cena and Kevin Owens put on a fantastic match. Brock Lesnar beat up Roman Reigns for a while and then got punked by Seth Rollins. Mm-mm. More interesting experience, Mm-mm. not a better match. Mm-mm. Oh, we got we got Lesnar. Lesnar. Reigns and Rollins told a better story in the ring than Owens and Cena did. Owens and Cena was spectacular. The outcome was amazing. The most probably more shocking – Owens winning, beating Cena clean in the middle was probably more shocking than Seth Rollins running in with the Money in the Bank briefcase at the end of WrestleMania. That's how (laughs) shocking that was. Historically significant for Kevin Owens. He's on a very short list of people who could say that they've beaten John Cena clean on a pay-per-view. But I'm, I'm telling you personally, storytelling, just the, the emotion of the moment, I, I have to give the slight edge. I'm not saying your match, your pick is bad. I'm just saying I think that the WrestleMania match was better. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, so I, I'm loving the heated discussion. These are still going, and and they're going crazy in the chat room for this. And I think I understand why as I as I look at this was across the board. Is there was no clear winner for this? One. I mean, obviously the one with the most votes. But I mean, but it was <laughs> it was widely widely all over the place uh, uh, across the, the the nominees were all over the place on here. But the writings were fantastic. Um, I, I think honorable mentioned for at least two or three write-ins for uh, Sasha Banks versus Bailey. Uh, uh, well, there you go. No there you go. Uh, in both cases, take over Brooklyn. Uh, there's a vote in here for Phoenix versus Mil Mortez, Grave Consequences, Lucha Underground. Who came up with these nominees? 
Huh. <laughs> Actually, we know exactly who came up with no, that. We, do. we have the video to prove it. We, we have the video, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Sensuki Nakamura versus uh, uh, Kota Ibushi was one in here. So, uh, 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 Ishii versus uh, Homa, New Beginning in Sendai mm-hmm. 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, a lot of stuff in there, of course. Uh, oh, so, uh, Nakamura versus AJ Styles. That was this year, unless they did it last yeah, year, too. Count. So, so I, don't, I, I don't know about that one working out, but but still, uh, definitely worthwhile mentioning uh, these guys as as well. Uh, so great, great stuff. Uh, so DJ Lunchbox, you yes, have the next nominees, or at least you will in just a moment. All right. All right. Uh, next up, next. Uh category that we're covering here on the mayhemies is uh, best brand best brand um it's all okay good he said it all right uh <laughs> <laughs> uh there was there was a little bit of a shocker i think in the nominees of this one because the nominees were lucha underground ring of honor and nxt now, personally I feel that uh, Lucha Underground, NXT, those are no-brainers. Ring of Honor, seeing Ring of Honor slide in there, uh, it, it surprised me, but I can't help but feel that our uh, our video representative made an excellent argument for it. So, without any further ado, the winner of Best Brand is... NXT! What? <laughs> NXT, wow, wow, Eamon, you got to have some thoughts on that. Uh, I think obviously uh, Ring of Honor. I definitely think, as as Lunchbox mentioned, a point was made for it. However, I think NXT and Lucha Underground are definitely the two top contenders. Um, I love me some Lucha Underground. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I do. I think they're doing something uh, extremely innovative with. Um, uh, their product and and their uh, and their show, as I mentioned numerous times before. Um, however, I do have to agree with the vote uh, from the fact of of, of best brand uh, includes a lot of aspects, and I think the brand of NXT is so strong right now. NXT is very much a thing that where if you mention in a wrestling uh, capacity. It is perceived very highly. It is perceived very passionately. Um, I feel as though um, it has I, the the brand of NXT has been developed and 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 has grown to a uh, to a level that it has to be recognized as the best right now, in my opinion. I think Lucha Underground has a, a spectacular product, uh, and 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 I also love their brand as well. But I don't know if it's necessarily the strongest when we look at NXT and Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jenna, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. What, 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 how are the Carlin's household with this uh, selection? How are you with this selection, dear? Um, I'm fine with it. You're um, fine with it? I haven't seen Lucha Underground yet. And Ring of Honor. A couple of times. Yeah, you like it. You think it's okay. Ask me if I'm okay with it. Are you okay with it? Hell no, I'm not okay with this. Lucha Underground has changed the game. And we all respect NXT and what NXT has done this year. And they've come a long way. But artistically, I can't help but look at this from a purely artistic perspective. And I'm telling you people, and I know the entire chat room is with me right now, Lucha Underground changed the game. I agree. Every old man in the building, in the industry, it's the best thing to happen to professional wrestling in years. I agree. I, I completely agree. However, the award was not for best artistic uh, uh, <laughs> creation. It was for best brand. Oh, wow. You don't know that that's not – I got my criteria. You got yours. Uh, LB, LB, what do you think of this? Uh, I, I, I understand Matt's point, and I agree with him to a certain extent. Yes, Artistically, it changed the game. It was, it was, uh, it's incredible what 
uh, what Lucha Underground has been able to do. Lucha Underground, in a very short period of time, has done what TNA tried for ages to do, and that has become a viable televised alternative to the WWE. But the WWE beat them to it by inventing their own viable alternative to WWE (laughs) and doing it better, and that is NXT. Right, Right, it is. Entirely. Uh, and now, uh, I, I know there is anarchy in the chat room right now over at live. Oh, wrestling man, man show trouble right now. Com. There, I, I have to <laughs> call it cops, man. I have to double check this again because once again, <laughs> the, yeah, this was a very, 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 very close. Like, like I, well, are we talking like Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders close? This is by two votes. Razor thin margin. This is by two votes. Are we talking about waiting until two a.m. for the results from Polk County to come in, sort? Is that how close it was? Polk County brought in two votes, and they were for NXT. Unfortunately, Um, very strong. I, 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 the the nod gets to NXT. Uh, Lucha just came out. Maybe, maybe if those couple of votes in here that voted for (laughs) WMS and KSWA voted for Lucha Underground, son of a you. I want, I, I want the people come forward and identify yourselves. We need to do, we, do, we need to do, like do we need to do a coin flip, Matt? Is that what we gotta do? <laughs> Get it? Iowa caucus jokes. Talk yeah, caucus that. jokes are hot, man. Don't worry about it. Don't be ashamed. Wow. Ah, caucus. Wow. That reminds that reminds me. Now that we're on the topic of the caucus, um, who did Seth Rollins caucus for? I have yet to find out. I don't know. Well, he has not stated who he's supporting in the race for president. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little political interlude. <laughs> oh, oh from that, Eamon, Eamon, you have our next nominee. Yes, and speaking of Seth Rollins' caucus, it is time for the non-wrestling personality of the year. His caucus is oh, not nominated. Why didn't we nominate Seth Rollins' caucus? I still have the picture. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Our nominees for non-wrestling personality of the year. Seth Rollins. What am I saying? Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> oh. Strong case for Stephanie. Yeah. Um, Stephanie McMahon. Paul Heyman. <gasps> And Renee Young. <gasps> Ooh, Nene! Nene! We got some support it's for Nene. Uh, and your winner is... Feel it? Feel it? Paul Heyman. There you go, Paul Heyman. Uh, not just because he liked our tweet and retweeted us last night, <laughs> during Raw, thank you very much, Mr. Paul Heyman, our good friend. Uh, but no, I, I, I think I, he, he's the guy to beat. He's the man, right? Uh, on the mic, you know, you don't get much better than that, right? Um, yeah, I would say out of these nominees, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, just say it, Heyman. I think Paul started out strong, uh, uh, especially going into WrestleMania and the build-up to that. Um, then you've seen him after that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, has he been bad? No, absolutely not. Uh, has he delivered in, in the way that he delivered in the last few years? Um, possibly. Well, I guess the question is, who's better than Paul Heyman? Well, that is the trick, isn't it? Because no one's better than Paul Heyman. Right. But the trick of this is, is there anyone more deserving for their performance over the past year than Paul Heyman, who has set such a lofty standard and has this immense amount of momentum and inertia um, from just being the best promo in wrestling sense for a long time? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's based off of the standards that he has set. Right. Um, you know, not necessarily – the promos he's delivered this year. Okay, okay. I mean, but you, you think about the good times with Paul Heyman, regardless, in the last few years, when that name comes up, I feel. Um, aside from that, people are mad. There was a strong yeah. write-in campaign for Dario, Dario Cueto. I understand, okay? 
Um, I, I, I think maybe our nominators were not terribly down with the Lucha. I will agree with that. But again, you, you definitely have the right to write in. And the very strong second place in this is Dario Cueto, by the way. Wow. So that there is a right in. there is an a there is a victory there for you guys. There is a victory uh, for you. So I, I want to let you know it was close. Not not quite as close as our our Lucha versus NXT situation. And again, it's the people. It's the people voting. You uh, decide. You decide. LB, what do you think? Uh, I. Again, it, it, the choice is obvious. It's Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's speeches are like music, and it's 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 not it's actually not much of a stretch uh, for them to inspire music. I would I would encourage everyone to look for a band called Does It Offend You? Yeah, right, and uh, they have a song called Wrestler, which is basically music set to a Paul Heyman speech, oh. and it is. Fan fucking tastic. Nice. That is nice. All right, from there, Matt Carlins, uh, you have the next nominees. I think I'm gonna let. It's okay if I let my wife uh, read this one nominees. No, sure, I sure. We're, I think that. I think that meets the percentage. <laughs> yep. The, well, you know what, honey? We we are here to present the award, the Mayhemi for next big thing. And uh, you you know a thing or two about but, um. Okay. What do, what do I know? Nothing. Just um read the read the nominees. What? Nothing. What about big Just things? Just read the nominees. And the nominees are. <laughs> and the nominees are. Finn. What? Finn, Finn Balor. Oh, okay. Johnny Gargano. Johnny Bananas. Dean Ambrose. It's very exciting. Oh. Your boys. And Johnny Gargano. Well, let's find out. And the Mayhemi for next big thing goes to... Finn Balor. <laughs> There you go. Finn Balor. Ambrose loses again. He's Man. number one in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Wow. Of course. Uh, Finn Balor. Yeah, I think out of all this goes, uh, I think Charlie Gargano is yet to have his big year, to be honest. Um, uh, Dean Ambrose is kind of, uh, I, I, you know, I, could you say Dean Ambrose is yet to have his big year? His I come will. out year? I mean, I think he's doing very well. But I think Ambrose had his big year when he was with the Shield. Ah, maybe. I, I think his ceiling is still up there somewhere, sword. So right. there's still higher places to go to. Could we be at the beginning with it with these upcoming matches with uh, with uh, uh, Brock Lesnar and, and, and Roman at Fastlane? Could that be kind of where we saw? I, I feel like we saw a year ago the coming of age for Seth Rollins uh, when he was in there with John Cena and Brock Lesnar at, at Royal Rumble, and look where that got him. Mm-hmm. Hurt. <laughs> well, okay. Look, <laughs> and look where he is now. So either way, this is a path that we will not see Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania 33. Is what we're saying. That's right. He'll be out injured. Okay. Okay. Just so we're all clear. But Finn Balor um, definitely made an impact. Uh, is the thing that's all, other than Bullet Club shirts that's all over the kids uh, in the crowds. Uh, well, they're, they're they're fanning themselves to the to the Finn Balor over the Cal- Carlin's household. Uh, but, uh, but, but certainly, I, I mean, he, he's something, he's something different. And, and, and as I've said, mm-hmm. I'm very excited to see what they do with him going forward again with the WWE machine marketing and production value behind them. If they can make triple H the undertaker, what can they do with Finn Balor in the greatest stage? No, I agree. I think his market marketability, uh, is, is tremendous. Uh, he's extremely popular you can't go to a wrestling show without either seeing a Bullet Club or Balor Club or, or something demon related. Like it's he's really sort of transcended uh, popularity. Certainly, uh, LB. Uh, I completely agree. He is the 
excuse me, fresh new face that uh, WWE has been looking for for a long time. Um, he can, he's, you know, good with the management. They seem to want to put their full and terrible weight behind him. And, uh, <laughs> the fans are connecting with him, uh, in a way that they don't with, uh, some other wrestlers. So I think the sky is the limit when it comes to Finn Balor. Of course. Fantastic. Um, and, uh, <laughs> people are drastically, want to, us to drastically, uh, uh, revise the nominee process for next year. Hey, we tried something new this year. And I think, I think it was a lot of fun. Oh, of course it so, was. and, and, and my in controversy, just the are way we like these it. These people who nominated these people don't know anything about wrestling, man. We Wait, went to the experts. Yeah, you don't know anything about wrestling. We talked to people that were over, at least two of the guys in here are over 10 years in the wrestling business. Ten years. Ten years. They wouldn't have known years. anymore about wrestling if they were holding the tennis racket, baby. Come on. <laughs> that was a really good Jim Cornette impression. Wow. That uh, wasn't trying. They're just kind of. Indie Mayhem Show. Our, our next, our, and our next nominees are for the Indie Mayhem Show Guest of the Year. I want to remind everybody, everybody from episode 51 to 100 was was uh, 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 qualified for this, could be a but part well, of it. And uh, chats are coming in over my music. Apologies. But uh, real quick, we did put some in here. But again, anybody that we had on was was not, was not available for this. Uh, we did have on here Bryce Remsburg, the sexy, talented dudes, Chris DeJoseph, Mary Elizabeth Monroe, now known as Kelly Klein, Sugar Dunkerton, Cedric Alexander, Raymond Rowe, Dylan Bostic, DJ Zima, Ion, Jessica James, and the list goes on. So many, so many that could go that that could be winners for this one, but only one can. It was a very strong showing uh, from this, and uh, you know there was a lot of people got votes, but the one that had the runaway of of votes on this one was our good friend. He was just on a few weeks ago, Chris the Joseph of Lucha Underground. See, see. He's Mr. Don't Call Me Big Chris De Joseph, uh, and, uh, we call and him El Hijo del Cueto Sorg. That's right. I can't pronounce that, so I won't. Uh, but thank you so much. He's been really great to us. And and, and again, I mean, the the guy that gives us uh, uh, so many good tidbits of of the news. Um, I think uh, I mean you guys. We had everybody on. We spent an hour with them. We don't usually do that on something like the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, so uh, I, I think that worked out really well, and it, came, it returned so soon, uh, and had a great time with it. Lucha Lund Underground represented on the Mayhemies. I hope that quells the chat room, uh, so so there's not so much of a riot going on there anymore. Um, 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 Eamon, you 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 you've been around for 50 of these interviews of the year. Uh, uh, what do you think about how, where everybody landed on this? I think it's fantastic. I think we had a lot of great interviews this year. Uh, some fantastic talks with some fantastic professional wrestlers. We've got some real minor talents in there. We've got Chikara Towns. We've got people uh, who are doing amazing things like Chris the Joseph. Uh, people who are doing those things and actually listening to what we say. How weird and terrifying and super scary is that? <laughs> you sound like DJ Lunchbox at the 10 year party when you say it like that. That was really spooky, <laughs> right. actually. <laughs> Um, uh, LB, LB, I, 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 I don't think you, you were like the only person here, not a part of that interview. Uh, but of course you, you've, you felt the aftershocks of those things. Uh, what do you think? It, 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 it made me feel very proud, um, because it's a great representation of how far this show has come, um, to get someone of his caliber on, uh, for a for a long interview, and uh, I'm very very happy that we can now refer to him as a friend of the show. Fantastic, uh, Matt Carlins. Um, what can you say, man? Chris has been awesome to us. He's he's not just been nice enough to come on the show. He's encouraged us, um, especially on the midweek war. He's been such a big part of getting the midweek war, Lucha Underground, specifically recap. Uh, on the map for a lot of people uh, on the Twitters and around the World Wide Web. Um, so, Chris and Joseph, thank you for uh, not just listening but supporting. And uh, just thanks to everybody, all the guys, all the great talented men and women who come on to the Indie Mayhem show. I got to say right now, Sorg, Eamon, 
Um, the Indie Mayhem Show is awesome. Every time I listen to it, I'm blown away. Um, these guys are so interesting, and you guys do a great job bringing in all these interesting people to talk about professional wrestling and talk about independent professional wrestling. And someday all these people that we're interviewing, um, they're all going to make it, and then we're in. So it's going to work out. Don't worry. Just be patient. <laughs> Jen? I have nothing Okay, and moving on. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And he has already <laughs> liked and retweeted the uh, notification that he's won the the Mayhemies. Uh, thank you so much to him and uh, uh, for for all the support. Uh, I believe next, uh, LB, you have the next one. If I'm not mistaken, is that right? I do believe you are correct, sir. I'm all right. Uh, I, I think last. you still need the nominees, right? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That's yep, likely. That, Certainly. Where the fuck is Slack? There's fucking Slack. Ah, it's on my second page. <laughs> oh, let's there see here. This, uh, this is a category very near and dear to my heart. And that is Wrestling Mayhem Show Host of the Year. Host of the Year. Um, let's see here. From it's uh, the regular round of uh, of uh, hosts and co-hosts and uh, and people who uh, appear on the show. The nominees are. <laughs> the man himself, our benevolent overlord, Sorgatron. We clap because we're afraid and we'll be shot. Every day. <laughs> Yours truly. Pop a lunchbox. Yeah. Uh, the Texas Terror, Eamon Payton. Yeah. yeah. Look out, ladies. Mad Mike. Yeah. Boom. Boom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the Flood Elemental himself. Bobby F. J. Town. Bobby, yeah. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Yeah. yeah. Tree killer. <laughs> tree killer? <laughs> he was a tree killer. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Master of the mainstream media, Matt Carlins. Hey. Me? I didn't what? even vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> This is going to be rough if I lose that one vote. All right. <laughs> and finally, the elegant, the sensual, the Riz. From Riz Plays Games, folks. From Riz, Riz Plays, Plays Games. Games, Riz for himself. Yes. And uh, rightfully so, <coughs> the winner of the Wrestling Mayhem Show Host of the Year, the man himself, Sorgatron. Aww. Oh, this is a complete and utter surprise. Um, wow. Um, I, I, so I, happy for you. I, I actually, I, heard it for <laughs> I, hate, <laughs> I, I hate being a part of this. I hate being a part of this actually. Cause I feel like, you know, the, the show exists because of all you guys and, uh, and, and my hat. I mean, I don't even have a hat that really looks right. You know? Uh, right now, and uh, and I'm just here, guys. This wouldn't happen if I didn't have you guys to talk to uh, a week in, a week out. That want to be a part of this, and all you guys in the chat room getting really angry about the nominees. I love you too. I love you too. And uh, and really, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for just being a part of this. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, so. Well, finally, we got one more, uh, one more category. Again, it's kind of an internal one for the show, and I think Eamon, you got this right. Uh, I do, I do got this because we gotta, we gotta give some love to the people that not only host this show but also provide their their, their dinero. Their uh, I can't think of other words for money. Sorry, I lost it. Case. Uh, the, the, the case. case. The chief, the chief. You don't want to call it. The simoleons. The patreons. Hmm. The patrons. The pa- Yeah, the, those people uh, nominated for this year's Patreon of the Year is Mr. Tony Garza at the Wrestling Revolution Yeah. 
We also have uh, the Matthew and Jennifer Carmen Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Okay, <laughs> wait for the uh, uh, It says someone's full official name, but I'm just going to go with Bo Diggity. Yeah. Yay. And Mr. Ed Burke. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, By any time. And, and, and the winner for Patreon of the Year. I know. This is Matthew and Jennifer Carnes having a podcast better. Yeah! Thank you, <laughs> Is she crying? Is she crying? It sounds, it's, it sounds like they're simultaneously orgasms when we, uh, <laughs> when we announce them. Oh, oh baby. Oh, oh wow. Honey, we did it. Oh, are they going to want more money now? Yes, they still want more money. <laughs> hey. Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot. Wow. 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 <laughs> Overall patron of the year. Of the year. The year. This wow. is from an, wow. okay. That was my terrible Finn Balor impersonation. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Winner. That's right, baby. Woo! That way. Play me off, Sorg. I didn't even vote for us. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you to all our Patreons. Thank you, everybody, participating in the May Hemis. It's been a great 2015. It's been a great 10 years of Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you so much. And one of the people that's been that's been uh, 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 joining us for the last couple of years and supporting podcast podcast. I forgot the thing. Uh, <laughs> Supporting Pittsburgh Podcast with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Give them a shout out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Inadvertent sponsors of the Mayhemies 2016. Thank you so much. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters. And, of course, Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the uh, Instagrams. Been supporting us. Been kicking out pizzas here for everybody that drops in to the uh, to the studio here on the Tuesday nights when you guys can join us at live.sorgatronmedia.com. All all night long. All night long. And thank you. Thank you so much. And by the way, uh, we're celebrating continually 10 years of Wrestling Mayhem Show. Let's take a quick look from uh, uh, our 10-year anniversary. And let's talk to uh, Antonio Garza, another of our Patreons. The first, the numero uno Patreon uh, as well. And uh, see how uh, the, the Mayhem Show has influenced him. And we'll be right back. Well, it, it's had a, a time impact, economic impact, and but I mean it's all good. Uh, I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I had a little itch in my in my back that I think I want to start my own podcast now. So it's definitely it's definitely happening. <laughs> uh, we'll see what what 2016 has for us. And we're back. Check out all. We got a lot of videos going up there. Uh, check out the YouTube page and the Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, we got a ton of those videos coming up. All right. We've dressed down a bit. It's time to get into the wrestling talk. Uh, after after we've all made up, the, the chat room has been hosed down. Uh, and, and we're all good to get back to Wrestling Mayhem Show as it was meant to be. And, and, and what better way to get back to normalcy than going to... Pop a lunchbox with the big question. That's right, Sorg. It is Pop a lunchbox with the big question. I had a doozy one cooked up, but you know what? We had a a, a mention made um, by a listener, and uh, it was so good that I decided that that will be the big question that we are going to use. So, Sorg. Oh. What was that question? <laughs> that question that I put in the Slack for you to read, sir. 
Son of a bitch, really? <laughs> yeah, I just put it there <laughs> a few minutes ago. Like just this very moment. All right, hold I on like here. when you read them. Mayhem, mayhem, I Jones. like it. I Andy like it when you read them. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show host of the year. Let's see here. That's uh, right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. No, that's saw. That's Sawtooth Willie. Hold that's on. Sawtooth here. Okay, that's so all right. Right. here <clears throat> is from Kyle Kuzi Turner at Tales of Henshin, and he wanted to know what are two wrestlers that you would say. You are surprised WWE hasn't signed, but should have many years ago. That's a damn good big question. I like that one a lot. We're going to use it. Awesome. All right. Who's got one? And he wants two wrestlers from each of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to pick two. I think it might be better if we just did one each. No, it is two. The question is two. Don't change the parameters of the question. That's right. I have two then. All righty. Uh, okay, uh, Mike, what, what are your two? Kaz and Daniels. Kaz and Daniels. It's Mad Frankie Mike. Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. Mad Mike is still dressed up for the Mayhem. He's, I'm really happy to see that, by the way. Uh, uh, that's there. because I'm here to accept on behalf of NXT Brooklyn Sword. Okay. okay. Well, tell me first tell me about Kaz and Daniels. And before we get the Mayhem Mania, yes. we'll get your acceptance <laughs> speech. Kaz and Daniels. Uh, Christopher Daniels has been one of the stalwarts of independent wrestling just in general over the past right. 10 years. Like he's been right there with Joe and AJ who are now both in WWE. And I'd argue he's probably comparable in the ring as both of them and definitely better on the mic than both of them. Mm. Like why he has never made in WWE is astounding to me. And um, just the fact that his teaming with Chris with uh, Frankie Gazzari in the past couple of years and how great they are together and how great they work together. Like their acts would work like gangbusters in WWE, especially against like teams like the new day, or if they wanted to go to NXT Enzo and Cass, it'd be perfect. I see it. I can see it. You can see it. Eamon, surely Eamon has a pair that should be signed by the E. Oh boy. Um, no, uh, so I was saying that solely from longevity purposes, and also just the the uh, the fact that like kind of like how uh, Mike mentioned, like their their lasting ability uh, in indie wrestling, uh, the Briscoes. Um, they've you know not been picked up by anyone really, uh, you know, and, and that's very interesting to me because they're very talented. They're still delivering great matches, uh, you know. However many years later, like they're. They've got you know gimmicks that are in place and, and they've got a following. So I, I, I they're the ones that kind of stick out in my mind. Okay, um, I have one. Uh, I have a pair, I guess. Uh, first of all, uh, a guy that I've had a chance to the film in person, and uh, it and and I think just just tremendous stuff. Whenever you see him, um, I I think Matt, you'll agree. I think you're, you're another guy that's kind of impressed by this guy every time you see him in person as well. But I gotta go with Adam Cole, baby. I mean, baby. that is a baby. Uh, I mean, that's a guy just just with charisma out the ass. He knows how to do it, um, and and I think he could do some pretty tremendous stuff uh, uh, up there. Also, the other guy that I think really, really makes sense is Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. Um, I'm uh, certainly like I see him as more of a WWE guy than than James Storm that 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 had had a turn in NXT recently. Um, I, I, he just makes sense to me. You know, I I, I don't know. I, 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 he seems like the right type of guy. He's got he's got a personality. He, he he's got great promo. Um, uh, uh, awesome in the ring, you know, with and without James Storm. Um, I think he definitely fits as, as something like that. So, um, LB, do you have one here? This is a difficult question for me. Okay. Uh, because my answer, my questions are my, they they got signed. <laughs> Cause forever, <laughs> forever would it, my answer would have been, uh, uh, AJ Styles and, uh, Samoa Joe, and they both now work for the WWE and anybody else that I think of works for the WWE now. Cause my, my next thought would be, Oh, Johnny Gargano fucking works for the WWE. Uh, 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 it, they're all, they're all already there. Um, I, I think, I think, no, I think I don't have an answer to this and that's a really good position to be in. Yeah, that's awesome. Or you're not watching enough indie wrestling. 
that is also the case. <laughs> You're not reading that around the Indies column every week. No, apparently not. Uh, Matt Carlins, what about you? All right, you guys are going to laugh at me, but this is the first name that came to my mind. And he may have even done a stint in WWE, but I'm sure it's been a while. But the first name that came to my mind was Hernandez. I mean, <laughs> he just looks the part. Just a giant dude, Hispanic, you know, Latin American audience. That's what the supposedly WWE always seems to want. Here's a giant Supermax. He's Supermax. He's just a yeah. big dude. I mean, can he wrestle? <laughs> you know, sometimes he's all right. I don't think he's as bad as some other people do. But yeah. All right. What else? All right. Uh, we got a few more people joined us uh, lining up for the I, I, I get a second pick. Oh, I a second. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot there was two. I'll go real fast. Okay. No, Abyss. No. Yeah. This is a guy who is way past two, and I believe he was even close to maybe making the jump. I've read that somewhere, but decided to stay with TNA. Uh, no, he talked dude, about just, that. He was ready to go. Yeah. I, I think he talked about that on, on uh, the Coca Cabana interview, to be honest. So you might be right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like I said a couple people have jumped on here, just like Mad Mike, uh, preparing for that mayhem mania uh, coming up here. Uh, so let's toss to find my button, find my button. Let's go all, all, all the way over to uh, the Elementals uh, abode. Uh, uh, Bobby FJ Town is with us. Uh, do you do you have two lined up here, sir? Yeah, I've been I've been thinking about I I have two. Actually, I have like one, two, but <laughs> I needed to narrow it down. Um, I'm gonna go can with. You throw, can you throw out an extra two because I couldn't come up with any? Do you want me to? I yeah, can you cover extra. me? Can you okay, cover me? I'll cover for lunchbox. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Red Dragon for lunchbox. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> Mr. Bobby Fish and Mr. Kyle O'Reilly. I completely agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> and then uh, my. I, I two, really like Bobby Fish. Actually. I couldn't agree more on O'Reilly. Yeah, yeah, Kyle O'Reilly needs to be in WWE. Or NXT or wherever he's going to turn up. Um, I'm going to go with Kenny Omega. Nice. That's and I'm going to go with Candice LeRae. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, I like it, Bobby. It, Bobby. Uh, she need, she's, she's at the forefront of the Divas Revolution in the Indies. I think she should be at the forefront in the Divas Revolution in NXT or WWE. So there we go. Good stuff, good stuff. Also joining us from California is Alex Cars. Uh, what what are your picks? Um, let's see. Okay, so I got, I got two pretty simple ones. Uh, and it's funny because both of them kind of, like, they did stuff in WWE. They, you know, kind of in the background. One of them is Joey Ryan. Hmm. Um, I feel like he could, he could work well with just about anything that the WWE could have thrown at him, and, you know, in all honesty, and the little bit of work he had as a background character, he did just that. Uh, and the other one is Scorpio Sky, who, if you remember the uh, anger management classes, <laughs> sketches, he was Harold. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, that should have led to something with him being on there more regularly. So those are my two. Awesome. And, and we do have, of course, uh, plenty of picks uh, coming in from uh, the chat room and even the chat room via Twitter. Uh, Tragar out there is saying uh, Sanjay Dutt and Ruckus are what guys Ooh, that should be in there. Fun. There you go. Uh, and second in uh, uh, Wheels is saying Sanjay Dutt and Amazing Red, both guys that we've seen in the Renegade Wrestling Alliance down here in West Newton. Uh, uh, great guys. Um, and uh, also we have a few other picks I might need help with these guys. Let's go with Riz first. Okada and Dalton Castle, he's saying. Mm-hmm. I'm with that. I'm with that. Our boy Dalton. Uh, Garza, uh, really surprised they haven't signed Ibasan and El Hiro del Pirata Morgan. El Hijo del Pirata Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know these also, ones. Also, I'm surprised um, none of us, none of us here said the Mayhemi winning tag team of the year, the Young Bucks. I don't see it. Well, anyway, no, 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 no. Gonna, I, I don't see it. That was actually going to be my other... Yeah. That was, I, that been, I almost said that, and then at the last minute I thought about Joey and Scorpio. I don't think the Young Bucks work in WWE. 
Oh, I think they do. That, in my personal opinion, WWE, there's a room for a tag team like the. If, if, they, if they can bring in, if they if AJ can bring in the Young Bucks, that's Whoa. how it works. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it, it would have to be, and and they completely like come in with a chip on their shoulder, uh, like is which is pretty much how they operate, right? Uh, yeah. that could be fun. That could certainly be fun. But, but I think it could also be a cool like with the narrative they're kind of going right now with AJ in particular, where it's like you are nothing unless you make it in the WWE. Yeah, like that's such a cool narrative they could tell with the Bucks being in there, being like, we don't really care about making the WWE. We know we're great. Yeah, like, well, it, I, don't they kind of drive that home with Sting as well? You know, yeah. hey, look yeah. at this guy that's done all these things, and now he finally made it to WrestleMania, right? Like, like, like now he's mm-hmm. made it after all these years. Um, yeah. You know, I, you know, he got his spot. You know, and, and we can move on from there. Um, uh, so the young, the young bucks are actually at the uh, Super Kick uh, after party, Miami Super Kick <laughs> after party. That's right. That's right. Putting it all um, down. I, if I can add one more thing about the young bucks and WWE, uh, let's be honest: the WWE loves to have as much uh, callback to the Attitude Era as possible. And with the way the Young Bucks act on the Indies, I mean, come on. <laughs> but are you sure they wouldn't ascension them and be like, you're trying to be something else, and then they would have DX come out and beat them up and have the NWO. Yeah, that would uh, be a fear. Probably would happen, but... It, see, if WWE was like Lucha Underground, someone would have cast a spell on Triple H and Shawn Michaels to shrink them to child size, and it would just be the Young Bucks. It's a DX reboot. (laughs) (laughs) DX reboot! um, Oh my god, yes. uh, Wasn't that like a transporter mishap on Star Trek The Next Generation one time? Yeah, uh, J.J. J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams presents the Young Bucks. (laughs) It's Generation X. I love it. Or the young bucks just step out of a TARDIS and say, "Hey, we're the Hardy Boys from 1996," <laughs> yeah. and they're wearing horrible tie dye. Well, yeah. that aside, hey, you know we got we got some important stuff going on here. Uh, but first of all, I, I I think we we do need to toss it to uh, uh, just to re- put a bow on the Mayhemies, um, uh, representing and accepting for uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. He was there. He attended. He's one of the 14,010 or whatever the number was. Uh, so he was like number 14,009, apparently. Uh, he is Mad Mike up there in Poughkeepsie, New York, the only one amongst us with a uh, a, uh, a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. Uh, so uh, 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 take it away, man. Um, yes, uh NXT Brooklyn, dude, I mean, you guys have seen it. I, I got my Bailey poster. I got my Bailey band. I got the program. I got the shirt that has friend of the show, Elias Sampson on it. You, you all saw the show. It was so damn good. And I'm going to be honest. I said it when we reviewed it. I said it on here when we talked about it. That Bailey and Sasha match was one of the loudest ovations I've ever heard in person. Like the only other ones that can compare is when I went to um, is when I went to see WrestleMania 20 in the Garden and Canadian wrestler X winning the world title from Triple H and Shawn Michaels winning in the Elimination Chamber. Those are the only like huge ovations I can compare it to. It was just such a like I've never been in an arena where everyone wanted the same thing to happen. Like everybody, and it was just such a fantastic moment, and and then that wasn't even the end of the show, <laughs> and Owens and Balor really really brought it after that, like just everything. I mean, the show opened up with Enzo and Cass, even though you guys didn't see it because that was the recording for next week. They knew how to open the show. They knew how to get the crowd hot, and they kept the momentum all the way through. And we even had to sit through an Eva Marie match, and we stayed pretty hot throughout the entire crap. So, uh, yeah, it was it was really a fantastic show. Really a fantastic show. Best show I've seen all year. I voted for NXT Brooklyn. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I, and I and I and I and I, I didn't want to play you off. <laughs> I wanted to let you go on that one, um, but that's great. And again, I think that's going to be play me off with Sasha Banks' theme. It's going to be interesting as they do something similar for WrestleMania weekend, right? Uh, what do they do there? Is it their WrestleMania as well? And, and again, back in, in, in Brooklyn for SummerSlam too. 
Um, so I'm going next year. I'm going next year. And I want to, but they keep putting wrestling. They keep scheduling local wrestling shows that weekend. So I I can't do anything about it. So I don't know. Unless I get that B team. Take a a vacation. Sorg. take a vacation vacation. from the wrestling shows. Oh, they'll love me for that one. Uh, (laughs) I don't need to go to cage fury. What the hell? Uh, anyways, uh, so, uh, with that, Hey, uh, uh, I'm going to let you take it away. Uh, Matt Carlin's. And uh, it's time for the thing. Everybody is just the mayhem mania is, is just 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 taking it by storm lately. I couldn't agree more, Sorg. Um, welcome to Mayhem Mania, everybody, uh, where we will create a WrestleMania card better than anything in your wildest dreams, using it only by the means of our own raw wit and intelligence and science and and cunning. And shenanigans and all the other good stuff. It's kind of a competitive thought experiment where we try to create the best WrestleMania card possible within the bounds of the current reality of the professional wrestling industry. Our goal is to create eight matches. We've got eight up here on the board. I'm going to run through them real quick. And then what will happen here is I believe five competitors are queued up and they will each have a chance to make one move or one change to the existing card. I'm forgetting to mention something. I'm certain of it right now, Sorg. So while I try to think of what I'm forgetting, I'm going to run down the card, and I will inform those assembled that, Eamon, you are up first, and Mad Mike is on deck. Sorg, let's run through the card and see what we've got to meddle with here this week. Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper in a suit. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Neville. Bevel, Bevel? Hmm. Bailey versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks versus Char Char. AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan. Cleared by three doctors. Just pointing that out. The New Day versus Enzo and Cass. The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Triple H and Mr. McMahon. Tyler Breeze versus William Regal and Samoa Joe and The Undertaker. Um... So, the, um, Eamon, while you ponder what your first move is going to be, I want to let everybody know, once again, remind you guys, um, basically you have to operate um, as Vince McMahon would operate. Um, so no bringing people back from the dead, no bringing in people who are hurt and obviously can't compete, even though, yeah, we fudged it. I know. It's okay. Don't worry about it. He's cleared by three do- outside doctors. Right, Sorg? Right, right, right. Um, what else am I forgetting to ask? Um, if you want to uh, catch up and find out what's going on with all this, go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out our past um, postings. We post a new post for every round. This is round four um, of Mayhem Mania. And uh, you can also go back to the uh, round one post for this year's Mayhem Mania. You can check out what happened last year. And uh, if you watch all those and you check out all those articles, it will be very easy to see how big of a mess this is going to end up. you got three options here, Eamon. You can either swap... A guy for a guy inside of this inside of this card, you could get rid of a match entirely, bring in a match with all new guys, or you can just add a guy to one of these existing matches if you want to really upset the balance of power. So, Eamon, Peyton, choose. Okay, I'm finishing what I started last week. Um, uh, take Neville out of that triple threat match and instead put in Finn Balor. That was easy. So then we have the last three NXT champions in a triple threat. You could have had the... Okay, never mind. Good job, A. I I know I could have But but I I think they have enough history with each other to where... Just say it, Eamon. You don't think Neville deserves to be at WrestleMania. It's okay. I can let out. Whatever. You can... Uh, God Amen. damn it, Eamon. Good times, good times. Um, Mad Mike is up. Jen, you're on deck. Mm-hmm. Jen's going to play. So we're going to have five moves this week. All right. Um, hey, you know what? What? I'm dressed as the 10th Doctor. I don't clear Daniel Bryan. He's out of that match. He's oh, out of that no. match. Just him? Yes. Daniel Bryan is gone, but I'm replacing him. With the Bulgarian brute Rusev. Rusev, you stole my idea. Good job. <laughs> Rusev well, versus AJ Styles. Yeah, like, oh, keep, I keep waiting to get a turn. Yeah. Honey, you want to step in here? It is your turn. 
Jen, you are a Patreon in the bank. Uh, no, you're not. You're the Patreon. You're the Mayhemi Award winner. Mayhemi Award. Wow. Mayhemi Award. Overall Patreon of the year. Oh, um, so, uh, Bobby, you're on deck. Now, I know you thought this over a minute ago here, hun. So why don't you hear here, use the sword. I totally forgot what I was going to say. I think you said you were going to switch. You said you were going to swap guys. Ah, Remember yes. Yes. Remember yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't want. Can everyone hear her? Can everyone hear her? Yeah, we got yes, her. We yeah, we I can. don't want Mr. Ambrose to be with this freak who doesn't belong here. Who, who, He's in a suit. He's in a suit. Who, who's she pointing at? Who's she pointing at? If somebody's going to wear a suit. Triple H in a suit. You just created an amazing tag team match. Luke Harper and Mr. McMahon are going to be a great, great tag team. <laughs> Damn it, Jen! That was my match. Awesome. You're welcome. Triple H in a suit. <laughs> I like how we forced this. Um, stipulation onto this one match and it just can't be shaken. I'm so um, happy. I'm so happy that part, that's the part that's sticking. <laughs> uh, Bobby, you're up. Cars, you are batting cleanup. Well, Eamon took one of my guys. <coughs> I was I was I was thinking about using Finn Balor for a match. But then again I couldn't use my other person I wanted to put in a match with Finn Balor in a triple threat. But uh, it was Hideo Tommy. Oh yeah, you can't use him. Um, but You're, I'm well, Bobby, going to he could come back before the end of Mayhem Mania, so he could. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the time. Um, but uh, I'm sorry to do this to you, Mike. I'm going to take Rusev out of your match you just made. No, <gasps> no, that's a new rule. We just said we couldn't do it. No, 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 no. Here, let, let me, let me. I'm, I'm going to jump in. Okay, week. listen, listen, listen. This is what's going to happen, Michael. I know. I was scolded for this last week. Michael, I didn't know. Here's what's going to happen. All right. Bobby is going to be a dick. <laughs> He's going to kill your match. But it's okay because next week you get what we like to call the car's position. And you get the absolute <laughs> dead last guaranteed spot. And whatever you do next week in round five will stand. For really, that's something named after week. That's crazy. All right. All right. All right. Okay, I'm gonna Bobby take go Rusev. Ahead. I'm gonna take Rusev out of that match. And I'm gonna add, since he's signed with NXT now, Mr. Shinsuke Nakamura in a rematch from Wrestle Kingdom ten. That's my boy. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I wanted to put Finn Balor versus him, but that's fine. You know what I have to say to that, Bobby? What? Yeah! Oh, I, just right. killed, I just killed a tree. God damn it, Bobby. <laughs> it's a slow death. It's a slow death. Um, <laughs> hold on, before... Um, okay, here we go. Alex, it's time. Remember, before you do something ridiculous to this card, <laughs> I want you to know there is no one coming to clean up your mess this week. This is going to stand for a week. Antonio's going to have to make a graphic of whatever BS you make up this week, all right? So I just want you to think this through carefully let's, uh, before let's, you make a hasty decision. Let's not let's, – let's just take it easy on him on the on the Photoshopping needs this time. Let's not be too mean. <laughs> let's not make like, him like Photoshop like, Hornswoggle into a tuxedo. No, mm? no, no, okay. no. King Cuerno in a suit. <laughs> King Cuerno in a suit. <laughs> Cowboy formal. On right. second thought, please do that. <laughs> tuxedo. All right, so I've had a particular idea that I've had since Mad Mike destroyed my dreams last week, <laughs> and considering that he nearly destroyed my dreams this week, and then Bobby almost did the same, mm. but because the stipulation holds for a while still, I'm going to add to a match. I like I'm going it. to add... To Styles versus Nakamura. Who? 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 I'm willing to add because he is not signed under contract to any other wrestling company. Uh -oh. I'm going to add for this special match that was brought to us by Chair Shot Reality, I'm going to add viral sensation Joey Ryan to the proceedings. 
Alright, alright. Is that a possibility? He's in Lucha Underground. Yeah, he's in Lucha Underground. He's already signed to Lucha Underground. You can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm not aware of him signing. He's in Lucha Underground. He's in Lucha Underground. Sorry. That's okay. That's why we do this. Alright. Back to the drawing board. Sorg, let's uh, let's talk about uh, how great last year's card ended up. Hey, Matt, um, how many weeks do we have before our match graduates? Because I think that Samoa Joe versus Undertaker match is almost there, right? Yeah, a couple of them are very close. I like to keep it under uh, under wraps because I don't like to influence the uh, – That's true. I don't like to make you guys, guys – uh, you guys. Did you hear that? Goys. Um, wow. You guys. Wait, because we're on week four? We're on mm-hmm. week four, but remember, we spent the first two rounds creating matches. So really, um, um, so the, that, best, the, the best okay. any match can do after this round is surviving two rounds. If a match survives three rounds, unchanged, unmolested, unaltered in any way, it graduates to a super card. So our goal is to graduate eight matches to the super card. I'm kind of like, just like. Trickling out the WWE? rules as we go along here. Do we get to create that on WWE card game supercard? Sure. <laughs> Riz will be uh, Riz will be uh, simulating all of these matches once they're on 2K. Yeah. Cars, cars, cars. Hey, hey, buddy, you got a backup plan? No, I didn't have a backup plan. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, Look, Wade Barrett. Look, Barrett. Good idea. He's injured. Is he? He'll be fine by Mania. He's been working matches hurt for like three months. He doesn't do anything. He just stands on the apron. Just tag him with somebody. He'll be fine. (laughs) That's not even on a camera. (laughs) Just my little eyes. Just do it. Do it. Mm. Okay, hang on. Hey, hey, Matt. While while Cars is thinking, I have a question. All right, go ahead. It's about... What if someone we have on the card becomes injured? Mm, that's an excellent short. That's an excellent, excellent question. Um, we've never faced that in Mayhem Mania. Um, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I guess we'll have to decide. I, I think if it comes to that, we'll kind of bring it up for a general pre-round discussion and if there's a consensus then we'll go with the consensus okay the same, uh, the same just, way we decide if somebody shouldn't qualify to be on the card because okay, i was just joking. thinking <laughs> i was just thinking if um like if the match is made when they're healthy it should stand until it's changed hmm. i'm just i'm thought. just thinking out loud okay good times hey matt i appreciate your feedback mike thank you for caring so much about the rules Go ahead, go. Cars. Hey, Matt, just can you clarify to me real quick? Because I'm looking at the big board and I got a little confused. Can you clarify what happened to the Ambrose versus Harper match? Dean Ambrose, <laughs> uh, Jen swapped Luke Harper for Triple H. So Ambrose is now versus Triple H in a suit, and Luke Harper is tagging with Mr. McMahon against The Rock and Roman Reigns. Oh, graphics are already coming in on the Slack, by the way. You may oh, want to fix that match. <laughs> You may want to fix that tag match. Um, fix fix what? It's not broken. Yeah. Well, I I beg to differ. Well, I think you're right. Reigns has got to go. Nope. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. Only thing I can think of is my backup plan. Yeah, the backup plan. You should always a lesson to everyone who's playing Mayhem Mania: always have a backup plan, or two or three. Always have a plan B. That always plan have plan B. B is always plan you, know, you know, here's the thing. There's always plan B. Okay, go ahead, Alex. I'm sorry. I'm okay. interrupting. I'm, I'm going to add to the Ambrose versus Triple H match. This is great. Another person in the suit. Great. What do you got? <laughs> I've got Horn Swoggle. <laughs> a, a, a mini suit. Hey, you know what? That's Ambrose versus Triple H's Ill- uh, versus McMahon's illegitimate son and his son-in-law. So I, we're there. I can hear I can hear Garza groaning all the way from uh, uh, freaking El Paso, man. Just wait till you see. Just wait until you hear what happens when he just hears the graphics. Say. Yeah, yeah, he just he just did <sighs> that. He just made the graphic. We're gonna hold on. That's an antique. That's like yeah, an unreleased up. I, I, I wanted to put a, a, a tiny horn so in between. Sorry, Bobby. I was gonna say he already had. Yeah. He's already fine. Triple H in a suit. Won't be that hard. <laughs> just uh, make it smaller. 
I want to. I want to put a tiny horn swoggle in between them. <laughs> Over their shoulders. Yeah, I, can't, I can't have El Torito on this card. I gotta have horn swoggle. Something has to happen. Something's gotta give, you guys. Uh, gotta meet the quota, right? Smoking marijuana? <laughs> hashtag, hashtag, hashtag VLC2. She, she hashtag, can't. Hashtag, I want to be clear. VLC2. Hashtag VLC tuxedo match 2. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Instead of a belt, they have a hanger. And the first person who grabs the hanger. First person to hang up the shirt coat wins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Matt, what do we so, got? So I'm going to run down the card, and then uh, you can get us out of here. Okay. Right, right. Here's what we got after round four. <sighs> Dean Ambrose versus Triple H versus Hornswoggle. Yeah. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor. Not bad. Bailey versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha versus Char Char. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Because when you've got the best wrestler in the world, you don't send him to NXT. The New Day versus Enzo and Cass. The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Luke Harper and Mr. McMahon. Yes. Uh, Tyler Breeze versus William Regal. And Samoa Joe versus The Undertaker player. That's it. Um, go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com and we can get you caught up on past rounds. And feel free to leave a nasty comment um, for what changes you would like to see next week. Guys, I feel like things have kind of settled into a little bit of um, a little bit of routine I feel like maybe next week we might want to shake things up. So, yeah. Are you going to kill it? Yeah. Yeah. Next week, we'll see. Next week for round five of Mayhem Mania, we'll see the glorious return of the Jar of Mid Carters. Oh, no. One of you poor bastards will be selected at random to pull a name from the Jar of Mid Carters, and then you will place said Mid Carter onto the card. Well, I'm pretty sure I have a thing that we. Mm. It's going to be fun. Just to, to comment on something, I just want Luke Harper to be in Mr. McMahon's corner just going, hey! <laughs> like he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah, one more yeah, thing, yeah. too. Mad Mike, mm-hmm. you get to go dead last next week because your match was destroyed. Am I immune from the jar of And you are immune yes. from the jar of mid carters. That's fair. Yeah. I know um, my match. Oh, no. Good times. I you know gotta wait the week. Yeah. Gotta wait the week, though. Yeah. Oh man, guys, so much fun. The mayhem mania is going down, <laughs> and and friends, friendships are ending, and it's it's a blast. Um, and of course, the, there's a horn swoggle for good measure. Uh, so with that, let's find out what you learned from wrestling this week, Eamon, I know you got something. I learned from wrestling this week that uh, God, kids love the new day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do, <laughs> and they want to fight them. All good, all they good, fight all fine. good. Uh, awesome, uh, Matt Carlin's. What'd you learn from wrestling this week? It's still Matt and Jen Carlin's. My apologies. <laughs> well, that's it's all right. She's here in spirit and on go. the couch. She's um, around. Actually, can I can I answer mine after we check some of the other uh, what you learned specifically? One from the Twitter. Can I can I pass until we check the Twitter uh, responses? Sort is that okay? I, I didn't know I had Twitter responses. I, You've I, got at least one Twitter response. I know that. I, did. I, I, I okay. just feel like I need to think about it for a little bit. Okay, so not, a problem. not a problem. Not a problem. I'll on something real quick. Huh. Um, the, the graphic for the uh, Hornswoggle versus Triple H versus Dean Ambrose was just uploaded into the Slack and is the greatest graphic <laughs> of all time. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 where is it? At? <laughs> I, I, I don't see it yet. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, see this. oh my god, he's <laughs> right down there. Never he mind, right never down mind. There. Here it is. Um, it's all goes peeping. <laughs> you may not notice it at first. You gotta take he's a right just, there. Just sword. take a look on video, guys. Just takes a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so Garza, bravo. Hey, he's hard Garza, to see. I want to point out he's wearing a suit. He's wearing a suit Garza down there. Wearing. Um, but also the Nakamura and AJ Styles. Hey, why not? You know. It's awesome. Good stuff. Garza. Good stuff. Uh, Bobby of J-Town, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned that Sami Zayn's uh, hip tosses are a thing of beauty. Mm-hmm. It's like, I've 
like, yeah. Um, also, Ty Dillinger was very over, and I feel very bad that he got hurt Aww. on the next night. Aww. He was so over. Yeah. I mean, he had Bailey doing his thing in the ring, but, yeah. So sad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Miss you, Ty. Miss you every day. It's from another podcast. Definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, well, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? I got yelled at about that before. Mad Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling tonight? Um, I learned that not even the power of positivity could save Team Bad. Oh no! Oh, no. Biggie and Sasha were fighting on Twitter. Oh no! I don't like it, guys. I mean, I love it, but I don't like it. Damn shame! Damn shame! Damn shame! Damn shame! Uh, straight from California, Shame. Alex Cars. What'd you learn? Shame. Well, I learned a couple things. Uh, I'll repeat first what I said from the Facebook group. Uh, I learned that Vince Russo and Jim Cornette are actually two sides of the same. I can't stand anything I didn't have a hand in coin. So- uh, Vince Russo having some choice words for various wrestlers that the fans love, like Kevin Owens, and Jim Cornette apparently not liking anything about Lucha Underground. The other thing I learned is that apparently Joey Ryan actually has a contract with Lucha Underground. Didn't I know that? You you definitely did learn that tonight, didn't you? (laughs) I learned that the hard way. (laughs) In a hard way, in the middle of Mayhem Mania. Oh, geez. Uh, That sucks. I mean, Uh, he's only on the one show, so I didn't realize he had contracts with those. Anyway. This is true. Guys, I learned that I am 100% on the Lucha Underground train. It, it is fantastic. I'm on the ground floor of Season 2. Uh, congratulations to to the crew over there. Uh, the mayhem bump of getting Season 3 already announced for Lucha Underground uh, just a week into this. And uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, guys, so so I tried just kind of throwing Lucha Underground on in the background while I was working, as I typically do when I'm trying to catch up on all these shows. Um, and about five minutes into it and I'm, I'm partway the vampiro section started and I was like, Oh no, I have to pay attention to this. And, uh, I also yes, introduced sure. my wife to Lucha underground. My wife. A lot of questions. I don't know if she's sold on it, but there's a lot of just her looking up from her phone and saying, what the fuck are we watching? <laughs> that is the correct response. It is the correct <laughs> response. That means next week she'll be into it. Uh, so that's where you start off with, with Lucha Underground. You, once you get past that, you're in, right? You uh, start off with a fantasy of someone biting the neck of their psychiatrist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that's very strong. That's how you start a fucking wrestling show. You that, end it with a strong thing. Yes. And you end it with three people being <laughs> Matt Carlin's. Yeah. Matt Carlin's. Yeah. What did you learn? Hashtag business bank. Oh. You know what? I'm glad you brought up Lucha Underground. I learned that any enemy of Lucha Underground is an enemy of me, and I will defend it to the ends of the earth. I will I will take this sword, and I will fight for the honor of Lucha Underground, and I will battle all spoilers, foreign and domestic, all you do-gooders, all you dirt sheet writers. You think you're so damn smart. Drop in your spoilers. Guess what I do? I turn off your podcast, and I never ever turn it back on because <laughs> I don't want to have it spoiled and people out there are somehow confused why are you okay with a spoiler for Lucha Underground or why are, why are you okay hearing spoilers for NXT or spoilers for Smackdown or spoilers for uh, for Ring of Honor but you're not okay with spoilers for Lucha Underground it's because Lucha Underground is telling a story, an intricate layered complicated story it is not some random bs thrown onto my television screen that i can watch in any order and it will still make sense no lucha underground is special it's a special little snowflake of a wrestling show and i will defend it to the last so there's that so yeah, bring your tennis is, racket i got a sword yeah i was gonna say it is <laughs> not necessarily a wrestling tv show it is a tv show that happens to be about wrestling yeah yeah i'm with that i'm with that as well uh, there happens to be some 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 of the scenes happen to take cl- take place in a ring in front of an audience. There you go. <laughs> that haven't read the script. A live studio audience from the chat room. Uh, first of all, yeah. Uh, hey, shouts out to the young bucks. Uh, one of them just uh, 
uh, accepted their their mayhemy tonight for Tag Team of the Year with a like on Twitter. So thank you for that. Uh, and we might have, or maybe it's already in there if you're hearing on post, we might have another acceptance speech in there as well uh, that we're, we're, we're currently reaching out to. Um, Garza learned that he was robbed as Patreon of the Year. Okay. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of that. Heel Garza. That is a possibility. He also learned that Marty Skrill Skrill versus Skrull. Will Ospreay is his new match of the year. Uh, and uh, uh, Riz also learned that Bailey is adorable. There you go. I guess in person. I could have told you that. In person, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that is... Oh, Riz also learned that Jen will feel his revenger. That sounds something else. <laughs> huh. Might have to check this wow. out. Um, wow. On that note, hey guys, it's been amazing. It's been the Mayhemies. It's been the Mayhem Mania. It's been the big question. Um, I, I hope you guys had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, that's what this show is about. It's about pro wrestling and fun. And uh, with all the guys hanging out here and having a blast, thank you so much. Just running down real quick. Of course, our boy uh, uh, Alex Cars, Chikara in 15.com. Uh, the great podcast over there. Go please check it out. Anything coming up you want to mention? Um, I'm in the process of recording the next episode of Chikara 15. Uh, I recently posted the return of the show uh, with the season 16 kicking off. Uh, I also posted the season 15 awards, uh, which unlike the Mayhem, had plenty of Chikara representation. Uh, Ooh, burn. Sick burn. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, gonna help it. Uh, but uh, yeah, other than that, I've also got the uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling Pick'em, uh, which you can find, which our, our friend in the mainstream media, Matt Carlins, is actually a part of. Uh, so the uh, next show for that is uh, the next show where points are on the line is National Pro Wrestling Day, which is this weekend. National Pro Wrestling Day. I only got that mentioned in on this. Almost made it through. Uh, so yeah, a lot of good times. Uh, awesome. Good, good stuff. Good. Amen at Amen Two, please on the Twitter is right down there. Uh, what, uh, what's going on? Uh, at, uh, inspire pro wrestling. Go check it out. Yep. Inspire pro wrestling.com. Uh, next event's February 28th. A little ways away, but we'll, we'll be rolling out most of for that soon. So definitely go follow us at mainstream Matt writer over at wrestling and indie wrestling dot us. Thank you very much, Sorg. I just want to let everybody know that the Mahe- that the Mayhemies After Party After Party is at the Beverly Hilton. I'll see you all there. Awesome. And also, uh, Bobby F.J. Town. Hi, everybody. Uh, i just like to announce that Boss Battle will be back next week. So keep your eyes peeled or ears peeled for that. Awesome. And also, Matt Mike Poughkeepsie, New York. And I just want to say next week. I shake up mayhem mania. It's going down. It's going down. You guys are going to start cutting promos on the, on the Facebook page. It'll be amazing. Um, so, uh, thanks guys. Thank you, everybody. Check out the show. Wrestling Support us on Patreon. All the other things. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.